First up is the dog scenario. Today we are going to be doing the first aid scenario for the dog in the hot car. So here we are. I've got a tea towel which I grabbed and the owner's key. So what, first of all what we're immediately going to do is we're going to remove the dog from the car. I've got the cloth that's going to protect me and also comfort the dog. So let's quickly do this nice and quick. And we're going to quickly get this dog to the nearest vet. It only takes a matter of minutes before a dog can die in a hot car, so it is important to get the dog out of the environment as soon as possible. We need to remove the animal before we can do anything else, as it is a very hot car. And we should also definitely take the dog to the vet for a checkup, no matter the circumstances, to make sure that the dog is okay. Today we will be refilming the first aid scenario with the injured bird by the side of the road. I have my helpful little bat felt toy. He will be taking the role of a rainbow lorikeet today and he's going to help us with our demonstration. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the animal, pick up the animal using this cloth which is going to provide a barrier between me and the bird. We're going to scoop it up, put it into our containment box and we're going to first take it to get checked and then if needed we're going to take it to the vet. It's good to be prepared so I have a large beach towel, a crate, I'm using a milk carton crate here but any kind of box will do and I've also got a towel to hold the bird close to me here so that I can hold the bird and try and minimize the spread of zoonotic diseases or make sure that the bird doesn't injure me and I don't injure the bird. So in this scenario I'm walking around and then I immediately spot the bird. First thing that you're going to want to do is D for danger. I'm looking around for danger. Any danger could be the potential road. I'm going to look out for cars to make sure that if any... First thing says I'm going to make sure that I'm safe, then we're going to make sure the bird's safe and bystanders are safe. So if anyone walks by, I'm going to tell them, make sure that they're aware that the bird is injured. I'm going to make sure that they are aware that this is a busy road and there's cars. The bird is a potential danger to bystanders and myself. I need to minimise the risk and the spread of zoonotic diseases and that's why I've got my gloves on so when I do touch the animals that we're not spreading any potential diseases. We've got the road and cars as well as bystanders and pedestrians that we need to be aware of. We want to make them aware of the situation and minimise the risk of them harming anyone. Any bystanders, I'm going to make them aware of the bird. So, excuse me then. Um, there's a bird here. I'm just going to We also want to immediately send for help contacting a vet or the RSPCA. Hi, we um we have an injured bird here. Uh, we are on uh, 51 Crescent Lane. Yeah, it's a it's a rainbow lorikeet. I think it might have um, injured its wing. So depending on the situation, is is going to be different what kind of tools that you have access to. So I might have asked help for a bystander and seeing what they've had but just on the side of the street we have a spare milk carton and I had a beach towel in my back back of my car so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'd be getting a bystander to do this and mine the box with the beach towel creating a little nest and then what we're going to do is the bird's going to be in quite a frazzled state we're going to quickly in one motion scoop the bird up pinning its wings to its side. We've got the bird there and we're going to put it inside the crate pretty quickly and then we're going to get that inside. So we have with us our injured bird here. 
And we want to perform our physical assessment only when it is appropriate to do so. In this situation, I am checking over the bird while we are contacting the vet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all action to minimise the risk to the animal, to myself and to bystanders. First of all, let's quickly assess the condition of this animal, including the vital signs. So we're going to check for response, airways, breathing and circulation. At any point that I feel unsure or I need backup, I would call for assistance from either my co-workers, bystanders or the supervisor. We want to make sure that we are handling this animal safely and humanely and provide constant reassurance to make sure that the animal feels comfortable. So I'm going to be using my voice and telling the animal, shh, you're okay, you're okay, and trying to convey that I am here to help the animal not hurt it. Depending on the circumstances, the checkup may occur somewhere else, such as the vet clinic or on the way to the vet clinic, but in this scenario I have brought the bird from out of the street into my house where we are going to await the vets. Going to the vets. So let's check over him. He is very responsive. He's making a lot of movements, trying to get away, so I've got a nice good hold on him. His eyes are very bright and alert. Right and agile, that's what we want. Very responsive. His airways look good, just look quite good. There's no blockage or debris in either of his nostrils from what we can see. Everything looks average. His chest is rising and falling appropriately for the situation and he doesn't seem to be hindered or having trouble breathing so I think his breathing is okay for the current moment. Circulation also looks quite good. Apart from the injury side, the mobility of this bed looks quite good. Overall, is responsive, he's making a lot of good movements and trying to get away from me. I've got a nice good hold on him. His eyes are bright and alert, which is a very good sign. The Airways look quite good, apart from the injury site, the mobility looks quite good. He doesn't isn't displaying any other worrying areas that we can see, but the vet will make the final call as we know birds are a prey animal and they're not going to show us any signs that they are injured unless it's a really, really bad situation. But apart from what we can assess now, it's looking quite good. Overall, his appearance is quite strong, he's got a good colour, feathers are shiny and in a good condition. He does look a little bit underweight, so I will have to report this when I see the vet. But overall, from what we can assess now, you're okay, shh, you're okay, shh, I'm going to make sure he's nice and comfortable. We want to make sure that we are... As we also want to make sure that he is being handled humanely. We want to make sure that we are holding him so that his wings are secured down to his sides to minimise injury to both himself and myself. And we're just going to try and convey a sense of soothing calmness to the bird while we transport it to the vet. Now that we have done that assessment, it is important to get the injured animal to a vet immediately and make sure to transport the animal safely on your car ride. Here I am buckling up and the bird is going to be sitting in the box on my lap. Make sure that it has someone watching it the entire journey. And we always make sure that once we've dealt with any kind of animal that we are washing our hands.